This is part two of the procedural generation tutorial series for Godot. In this part, we're going to look at some ways that we can use the randomly generated mazes we created in part one for different applications in game projects. So here's our script from the previous part where we made our map using the maze generation algorithm. And all I've added to it is I've added a camera 2D so that when we run, I can zoom the camera out and put the camera at the center of the map, which allows us to make a much bigger map. So if I run it, you can see, you know, we made a much bigger map here. And that's just going to be more convenient for the different variety we might be making. So the first thing I want to talk about is something a lot of people asked me about in the comments, and that is seeding the random number generator. And if you're not familiar with that, uh, a lot of procedurally generated games like Minecraft, for example, use this so that users can share the same random worlds. And so what happens is if I generate a new world, it's going to be it's going to be randomly created as I explore it. And but if I share with you the same seed that my random number generator is using to generate that world, you will get the same world as me, even though we explore some, you know, the, uh, a humongous world, we don't have to share all that data, we just have to share that one number and we'll always be sure that we'll generate the same world. And we can do that with our randomly generated content here too. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a variable called seed, or I'll call it map seed, to hold that seed value. And I'm setting that to zero to indicate that we don't have a seed. So here in our ready, what we're going to do is after we randomize to initialize the random number generator, we're going to check to see if a seed has been set. And so if no seed has been set, we want to make a new one. So we'll set that equal to a random integer. And then what we will do is seed, using the seed function, we will seed the random number generator with that value. And then I'm also going to print it out because I want to see what it's coming up with. So we'll print that out. So if we run this, we'll see a random map. And if we run it again, you know, we'll see a random different map. So every time we run it, we're getting a, a different random map. But it's printing out this value here. This is the seed that it used when it made the maze. So if we copy and paste that value, we'll get the same pattern again. So if you look really closely at how the pattern is laid out, you've got a couple of, just pick a couple of things that you notice what they look like and we'll copy and paste this value for the map seed. Get rid of the extra space there. And you'll see that when we run it, we get the same exact pattern. So every time we run this, we're going to get the same pattern. And that's how the seed works. And so depending on your game's application, you could generate this at the beginning when the player starts a new level and then save this in, as part of the save file so that the user can see it and recall it if they want to play the same level again, that kind of thing. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the maze itself. So when we talked about the recursive backtracker algorithm, we talked about how it generates what's called a perfect maze. That means that from any one point on the map, there is one path to any other point on the map. There are no loops, there's no, there's no uh, two routes in between any places, and there are no uh, sections that aren't connected at all. And so that's fine, and we have our nice little twisty maze, but it means that if, for example, you were generating a random city, city streets don't work like this, they need, there need to be more intersections. So one thing we can do is once we've generated the maze and we know everything is connected, we can go back and randomly remove some extra walls in between some of the additional tiles. So I'm going to make a variable to control that. This is the uh, fraction of walls to remove. So this is just going to be a number from 0 to 1 of how much removing do you want to go through and do. And I'm going to set that to 0 0.2. And we're going to start off doing this very simply. We're just going to randomly pick tiles out of the map and if there's a wall on that tile, we're going to remove it. So I'm going to go down here to the end and I'm going to make a new function for that. 
Okay, and the erase walls function is going to randomly remove a number of the map walls. Okay. So we need to we need a loop. So we're going to do this however many times, which is going to be width times height times the erase fraction. All right. So if we have a ten by ten map, there's a hundred of them. We're going to do twenty randomly. So now we need to pick a random tile, but we need to pick one that's not on the edge. So I'm going to pick an number between one and width minus one. Do the same thing for y. So we're going to do height instead. And now we have a random tile. So the cell that we are focused on is that x and y. So now we need to pick a random neighbor of the cell that we just got. So neighbor is going to be, we take the keys from cell walls, and remember that's the four directional vectors, and we're going to just pick a random one. Right, so we pick a random directional neighbor. If there's a wall between them, remove it. So we picked a random cell, we picked a neighbor, there may or may not be a wall between them. So if there is, so if map.get cell v, so we get that cell, and then we compare it with cell walls uh, neighbor. Right, so if we have a 15, for example, all four walls, and the neighbor was the one to the north, then we're comparing it with north, and we're going to get, right, we're going to compare it with north, and we're going to get a true or false here if the wall is there. So if it is, we're going to remove both. So, so the cells walls, let's do, so the new walls is map, get cell v, cell minus cell walls neighbor. All right, so since we have a north wall, we need to subtract it. But we also need to remove the south wall from the other one. So n walls for the neighbor is map.get cell v cell plus n, oops, cell plus neighbor, minus cell walls negative neighbor. Right, we want the opposite. So if we have a cell with a neighbor to the north, we're going to subtract the north wall, and on the neighbor we're going to subtract the opposite, which is the south wall. So now we can just update now we can just update the map. So map dot set set cell V and map. cell plus neighbor. Okay, and so that will update both of them. And now just so we can see it happening, I'm going to stick the yield here so that we will pause or update the screen in between each frame. And then we're going to go up to our ready and just call the erase walls and we should now see it start removing some tiles. There we go. So you see how we're getting some loops here now, some places where there's little roundabouts, some places where there will be ways to get around from one place to another. And depending on what you set that erase fraction to, you can get a pretty uh, densely connected map or a very sparsely connected map. For example, here's the result if you set the erase fraction to 0.8. It's really high. You get a lot of grids and chunks of tiles that are all connected together, which might make sense if you wanted a very densely populated 
city or something like that. And speaking of cities, since we're using roads here, it kind of makes sense that you might want to turn this into some sort of city or, uh, or other driving kind of game. And in that case, you want to put some items, some decorations, some buildings, things like that in the green spaces. But because of the way our maze generator works, every single tile is being explored. So every tile has a road in it. So that only leaves us a very tiny amount of space in between the adjacent roads to place any buildings or other objects. And so what we want to do is space these roads out and create more space in between adjacent roads. To do that, we can go in and redefine our neighbors. So instead of the neighbors being the one cell to the north, south, east, and west, we're going to change this to a two. And so we're going to say a cell's neighbors are the ones two spaces away in any direction. And so that means it's going to consider those. But in our making maze here, we have to change this because we're now appending all cells to unvisited and there's no way to visit those in between cells. So we actually need to take this line out. So we set the whole map to 15s, to solid green. And then we're also going to do a loop where we go from 0 to width by 2s and y from 0 to height by 2s. And we're going to append those, just those, to the unvisited. And now if we run this, what's going to happen is we're now, our maze algorithm is running just fine, and it's calculating every cell's adjacent neighbors by skipping over. And of course, since it's skipping over, there are gaps in all of the roads. So what we need to do is whenever we skip over a tile, whenever we cut a wall in between, say, this one and this one, we need to place a connection there. And if you remember from our list of tiles here, that means we either want to use number five. We want to make it, we want to make that in between cell a five if it's connecting east to west, or we need to make it a 10 if it's connecting north and south. So it's, we either moved horizontally or we moved vertically. So now down here, where we remove the walls from both cells, we have a direction vector here that's keeping track of, that'll tell us whether we went horizontally or we went vertically. So after we set these walls, we can add another insert intermediate cell. So we want to stick that one in between. So if dir.x is not equal to zero, that means we did a horizontal. So we need number five. So we need to set cell v current plus dir over two. So we want to do halfway, right? Because dir is uh, two spaces. So we want to do a one space over and we want to set it to five. Oops, we got missing an L there. And then otherwise, we must have gone vertically. So, so we want to set current plus dir over 2 to 10. And that should now insert the one in between everywhere we go. And made another typo there. But there we go. So now our maze is generating just like it did before but we have more space in between our roads. So we have room in here to put buildings and trees and whatever other kind of things we want to put in between those spaces. And you could totally go and just and uh, generalize this and make the spacing arbitrary, three spaces, four spaces, whatever. I just wanted to do two as an example to show you the concept. Now, if you also want to remove walls, which I had disabled in the previous uh, example, uh, then you're going to need to change your erase walls because we're also going to be skipping over. So 
you'll have to change things like for example when you pick your random cell you need to pick a you need to pick an even numbered one so instead of picking and we still don't want the walls so we're going to start with two and the easiest way to get an even numbered one is just to go between the root two minus two minus two and then multiply by two and then that way you get something in between left in the middle and then you multiply by two so you get somewhere um, all the way across and it'll always be an even number because you multiply by two and then we can use that same if statement here to insert the intermediate cell except that the naming is this is neighbor and this is uh, cell plus neighbor right here and again this is another thing that you could generalize so that your spacing can be arbitrary so there we go so now we drew our spaced out cells and then we connected a bunch of them so now you can make little city blocks here that kind of thing and then one other thing I wanted to show you is if we take our maze scene we're using you know our square tile map but the cool thing about doing our tile map this way is that the the arrangement of cells the the actual maze that we generate and the connections is independent of what the map actually looks like what the visibility of it is and so for example if you wanted to use isometric tiles you could use isometric tiles as well and they look like this so we have the same connections that we had with our top-down cells but rendered in an isometric uh, or in an isometric style and all we would have to do is change our tile map and tile set and we won't have to change any of the code and I'll show you how that works so we're going to take I'm going to take the maze and I'm going to save this scene as and call it maze isometric and so now I still have the same script attached to it let's rename this to and so we have the same tile map the same script but now I'm going to take the tile map and I'm going to change this to isometric and then I'm going to change the now when we do that we have to change the cell size and the cell size that we want for these isometric tiles we're using is 100 by 50 and then we need to change the tile set and so if you load you can see there's an iso roads tile set so we load, load that instead now we've got isometric tiles right and we can lay those out like that and now when we run it our maze is going to work exactly the same except it renders it with isometric tiles okay so i hope you enjoyed that uh, it went a little bit longer than i had planned i so i do have at least one more video i want to do talking about the maze specifically uh, doing the decorations filling in those blank spaces in between the roads with other features and also doing a, a very um, simple game where you walk around on the maze and, and explore it so that'll be that'll have to happen in the next video so as always please comment with your questions and suggestions below and I'll see you in the next video